Hey everyone, welcome back to another Talk With Major video cast, where I report to you some of the best stories in the world today. This week I have several unique stories for you, from the excavation of a Viking burial ground to an award-winning dog. Also, stick around to the end of the video because I got some exciting news that hopefully will transpire very soon. So be looking for that at the end of the video. But without further ado, let's get to this upbeat video this week. Well, I guess we'll just jump into our first story. These stories may not be in order, but they're all really good, so who really cares about the order? But we'll get right into it. This first story is titled, Two Viking Swords Buried Upright May Have Been a Guide to Odin Valhalla, Discovered by a Road Crew. This story was published on November 18, 2022 by the Good News Network. This first story isn't something I'd normally bring to you because it's so completely different than anything I've done before. But my grandma is a Norwegian and she just loves Vikings, so I figured I'd bring this story especially for her. I mean, if no one else gets anything out of this, I know she'll thoroughly enjoy it. So grandma, this story is especially for you. The first story starts out like this. Swedish archaeologists have unearthed that two Viking swords from a burial mound in which they had been buried vertically as if resting on their points. The vertical placement reflects a deliberate symbolism that has the archaeologists ruminating over what it means. Suggestions include honoring the god Odin or even keeping the dead person from rising as a draw, an undead warrior. This is a super amazing find. I can't even imagine what it's like to find something so old buried right where you're about to build a road. I mean, that has to be mind-blowing. And to find two swords in this position, I can only imagine what they were thinking when they seen them and all the ideas they have on what this could possibly mean. This really is a crazy find, and I can't believe they found it right in line with the road that they were building. The story then continues like this. Ahead of a highway construction in Vassmanland in Sweden, the archaeologists discovered a Viking Age cemetery of about 100 cremated graves stretching over one acre of ground. When you find swords in graves, which you don't do very often, they often lie beside the buried individual. The graves were about 19 feet wide, and the whole of the cemetery was built atop an older burial mound. Spoiler alert, I kind of gave away the fact that they were building a road a second ago because I haven't even read that part of the story to you yet. But like I said, I can only imagine how exciting it was to find this entire burial area while making a road. I mean, I bet their jaws hit the floor when they found these two swords standing upright right under their feet. This truly is an amazing find, and I wish I was there whenever they unearthed the stuff. The story then ends like this. But why were the swords pointing down? It's possible that it was to consecrate the path of the dead warrior to Odin's Hall of Valhalla, where half of all warriors who died in battle went to enjoy a rip-roaring afterlife. It's also possible that it was to prevent the rising of the dead man into the service of evil, and that the sword had impaled the ashes of its former owner. Lastly, there's the possibility that the pommel of the sword would have rested just above the level of the earth, allowing visitors to the grave to reach out and touch some part of the one entered below. This truly is an amazing story, and all the ideas they have about what these swords could possibly mean. I mean, it would be absolutely crazy 
and insane if it was a patch of Valhalla that they found. Also, it's crazy to think that maybe it was to keep evil spirits away or it was a way for people to get closer to the dead. It really is amazing. And I mean, leave it to the Vikings to have a rip-roaring good time in their afterlife. I mean, that just sounds like a Viking to me. But anyway, that's the first story for you, and I really enjoyed it. I think it's really amazing, and it's cool to bring a story that's so different to you guys, especially for you, Grandma. I hope you enjoyed it. This next story shows how far science has come in the past few years. I mean, I've seen some of this with the disease I have. I mean, look at all the amazing medicines I'm on that keep me going and healthy every day. This story shows some really amazing scientific advancements, and I think a lot of people will be happy to hear this story. I mean, I have several people in my family that would think this is really good news. So let's get to the story and check out what scientists have figured out now. This next story is titled, Protein Changes in Blood Could Become New Tests for Catching Breast Cancer Up to Two Years Early. This story was published on November 18, 2022 by the Good News Network. This next story starts out like this. Newly discovered protein changes in the blood could pave the way for a new test to catching breast cancer up to two years early. Researchers revealed they found the levels of six proteins in people's blood changed before they were diagnosed with breast cancer. They claimed this could form the basis of blood testing to catch the disease early in those who are genetically predisposed or have a family history of breast cancer. It is amazing the things that scientists have found now. Could you imagine having a blood test that could tell you that you're going to have breast cancer two years from now, but that they can give you a treatment so you never get breast cancer in the first place? That is so crazy to think that they can stop a disease before it even starts. I truly cannot believe how far science has come and the things that we can figure out today. The story continues and ends like this. The five-year relative survival rate for breast cancer detected early is just about 99%, but cancer that is detected late falls by about a 10% rate. Currently, the study includes 1,174 women who are at higher risk of breast cancer. Women taking part in the study have given blood samples at least once a year for 10 years. If they develop breast cancer, they give samples when they are diagnosed too. A group of six proteins were at higher or lower levels one or two years prior to breast cancer diagnosis. Dr. Laura Bigenzoli, co-chair of the European Breast Cancer Conference and who was not involved in the study, says, if this research ultimately results in a blood test for people with a higher risk of breast cancer, that could guide personalized screening and help to diagnose breast cancer at the earliest possible stage. So many years and so much work goes into these clinical trials. I can't believe how many years they've been doing this and how long they've had to work on it. And all the people they have to see and test to get the results that they need. But this is all necessary to make sure the study goes right and anything and any medicine that's made after the study is safe for people to take. I've taken part in one clinical trial and they had to do a lot of testing, but ultimately it was to make sure everything was safe and I was happy to take part in it. But this is really amazing that they're able to find breast cancer early based on proteins in a person's body. Hopefully this clinical trial goes super well and everyone can be tested for breast cancer early and possibly put into it before it even starts. This next story 
is the one I'm most excited to share with you. This story is really great for people with disabilities like me. And it's also about a tool, but to me it's more like a toy that you can use to get around in the outdoors. So let's get right to the story. I'm so excited about this one. The story is titled, These states allow visitors free off-road wheelchairs in their parks and natural areas. This story was published on November 16, 2022 by the Good News Network. The story starts out like this. Parks departments across the country are beginning to offer free all-terrain wheelchairs at their visitor centers for disabled people to explore their state's treasures of nature. Such programs already popped up in Colorado, Michigan, and South Dakota. With some weighing 500 pounds or more, the motorized all-terrain wheelchair is like a caterpillar but without the scoop in the cabin. The tracks can allow it to go up or over some serious obstacles, such as stumps, mud, snow, and more. This is so good. The world is becoming more and more wheelchair accessible every day, and things just keep getting better and better for people with disabilities and their ability to get around. But it is really awesome that it's even moving off-road. Even where there's not ramps, or sidewalks, you can still get around and enjoy the outdoors no matter where you're at. I really want to try out one of these chairs and I might even have to get one of these bad boys for myself. The story continues like this. The first state to set the trend was Colorado, who started in 2017 with their Staunton State Park Track Chair Program. Later, the Michigan Department of natural resources place all-terrain wheelchairs in 12 of their state parks, boat launching sites, and trails. Georgia and Minnesota recently joined this group. We want to create an unforgettable outdoor experience for everyone, not just for people who can walk, Jamie McBride, a state parks and recreation area program consultant with the Parks and Trails Division of the Minnesota DNR said, Minnesota have only five chairs. They're expensive assets and they recommend calling ahead to reserve the use of them ahead of time. The dozen or so action track chairs used by the Georgia Department of Natural Resources were required by the drive and determination of Amy Copeland, who after a zip lying accident in 2019 lost several extremities to a flesh eating bacteria. It is so awesome that so many states joined in on this endeavor. I just wish Texas would join in on it too and offer some of these wheelchairs at some of their national parks. But, I mean, it has to start somewhere and it will eventually get here. It's also awesome that somebody put so much hard work into figuring this out and getting wheelchairs in more states. The story then ends like this. Amy Copeland said, I started this out of my own inner passion and to see how many people share my passion, not only people with disabilities, but everybody is incredible. Her goal now is to target North Carolina for the same project. All I can say is thank you, Amy Copeland, for starting this and trying to get these wheelchairs in as many states as possible. Please add Texas to your list now. Well, that was an unexpected problem. I never thought my GoPro would overheat during recording and I'd have to record the next day. As you can tell by my change of clothes, and the slight change in background. But now that we got that taken care of, let's get into my last story. The story is titled, Winner of Hero Dog 2022, American Humane Crowns Pup Who Went From Trash to Treasure. This story 
was published on November 16th by Fox News Digital. The story starts out like this. Ethan was the sheltered dog nominee, known for making a remarkable recovery after being dumped in a parking lot, sick and dying. Sheltered dog nominee Ethan won this year's coveted award at the annual Hero Dog Awards in Palm Beach, Florida, held on Veterans Day 2022. Ethan was a shelter dog in Jeffersonville, Indiana, who came to the Kentucky Humane Society in a horrific way. Ethan was only 38 pounds when he should have been 80 pounds. It is always sad to hear about a living thing left in this state. One thing I forgot to add when reading this is that this dog was dumped in the Humane Society's parking lot in January of last year dying and sick and it was also underweight so there's no way it could have stayed warm in that cold parking lot so i'm glad the humane society jumped in to help save its life the story then continues like this today ethan's owner jeff calloway told fox news digital that there was an instant connection i knew he was my dog calloway said after checking the security cameras for footage of someone dumping the dog, Calloway said he went to check on the pup. I looked in the vet area to check on him, and when I saw him, there was an instant connection, Calloway said. Although it seemed as if Ethan wasn't going to make it, Calloway said he knew the dog had a bigger purpose in the world. Ethan took his first steps after six days in intensive care. It's nice to hear that a dog that was in such bad shape was nursed back to health and found a great owner that loves him dearly. It is awesome to see the connection that they made and the bond that they have now. The story then ends like this. He's a playful pup who loves to run and play with the other dogs, but he's so unique in that he understands the situation we're in and responds appropriately. Calloway said. Ethan's story ultimately helped earn him the award of Hero Dog 2022 by American Humane. From trash to treasure, he's making a difference in this world, said Calloway. The Hero Dog Award is our way of returning the favor and honoring the best of our best friends. Votes by the public plus decisions made by a judging panel contribute to selecting the Hero Dog Award winner. This really is a beautiful story. It's so sad that this dog was dumped in such a horrible condition. But I'm so happy that the Humane Society stepped in and nursed him back to health. It's so great to hear that he found a good owner that loves him so dearly. And he is definitely deserving of the award. And it's awesome to hear how he knows the situation that they're in and acts accordingly. It's a very smart dog and it's truly deserving of this great award. I think this is one of the most upbeat stories that I talked about in this video. Well, after those motivating stories, we're finally to the other thing I wanted to bring up in this video. So about seven or eight months ago, my parachairs start having some issues and we tried to get it repaired and after talking to the the representative from the power chair company that worked on the chair he said he thought it was about time for me to start looking into getting a new chair so we decided to start the process he put the order in and a few weeks later uh, the wheelchair people came to size me for my next power chair but you know with some medical stuff is not the easiest thing. So after I got sized from a wheelchair, uh, we didn't hear anything about the wheelchair for a long time. It was months and months. And it got to a point where it was about six months later and insurance said they didn't want to help pay for the chair no more until I got another order. So I had to wait on another order and that took another month. So here we are seven months later I'm um, needing a new chair. Well, finally, I got to talk to the representatives and my doctor, and we got a new order put in for a new power chair. 
So we're lucky that that happened. But since getting the new order in, things have been kind of slow. So it's been a while and I think we're starting to go on eight months now. So I hope it's worth the wait in getting it. Well, now the paperwork is at insurance and that's taking a while, of course. But once the paperwork is submitted, I will finally be able to get my new chair. And what's cool about this is I decided to do a wheelchair build video. I'm getting the chair in a very bland color because I plan on wrapping it like people do at cars into a different color. And then I plan on doing a build series kind of like people do with their cars on YouTube. I figure no one's ever seen it done with a wheelchair, so I do it in my wheelchair. So we're going to add a bunch of cool things to my power chair, and I'll let you know what we do along the way. And hopefully, I'll have a delivery video of my new power chair before Christmas gets here. So everyone, please pray that it gets through insurance quickly and that I can get my new power chair soon. I'm so excited, and I definitely need it really badly. Well, I think that's about it for this video. Once again, I enjoyed bringing these upbeat stories to you guys. Because you know there's not enough upbeat news actually shown on TV in this world. But there's definitely good news every day. But that's all I have for you in this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And to see more of my videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, visit ProjectMarinsThing.com to buy some cool Project Marriage Thing merch. Currently on the store is my 200 subscribers merch. I'm so excited that I made it to 200 subscribers on YouTube. So go on over to my website and order you something cool to celebrate this momentous occasion. Thank you for watching. Woo, woo, woo.